All right, this morning we're going to talk about um, multiplying fractions, which um, is a difficult, a little more, one that is difficult conceptually, but um, let me build on what we know of multiplication. If I look at a multiplication sentence such as 3 times 5, one way of thinking about that is we have three groups of five. And so if I was to visualize that in this way, we'd see three groups of five is really equal to 15. All right. All right, so if we take that same approach with fractions and think of 3 times 1 fifth as being three groups of 1 fifth of something. So here I have my picture, and that's my three groups of 1 fifth. If you notice, each whole square is cut into five equal pieces, and the, we have one out of those pieces. We have one out of those five pieces, but three times over. So think of it as being three pizzas, for instance, square pizzas, and you get one out of the first five pieces and one out of the next five pieces and one out of the next five pieces. So out of the three pieces, you or three pizzas, you've had three pizza pieces, each of which is one fifth. Well, if we put that all together, that means you've had one fifth, two fifths, three fifths. So we see that this is really equal to three fifths. All right, now, to give you a little hint, we'll often do something like that. Let's, let's go on to the next one and take a look at the next page. All right, what happens if I have a half times a third? Now, that's a little more difficult because in terms of a group, well, we can think of that as a half a group of, of a third. Well, here's my one-third, and I want half of that. Well, if I want half of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and split it up. Again, let's, let's think pizza. I want a pizza craze here. Let's say I had a pizza, and we cut it into three pieces, and my wife and I each had one piece, and we left the other one until the morning, and then we decided in the morning we're going to split that one up. So how much of the original piece of pizza do I have? Now, I didn't split that one very well, did I? So let's try to cut it right in half here. Let's see if I can get any better. I think that's a little better. Usual rule is whoever cuts it doesn't get to pick. But if I cut it right, now there's one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, right? And I want half of that. So I get only one, right? I get half of the one-third that was left. So this would be one-sixth of the original pizza, right? Let me show you that in a different way. If I was to pull this up, and again, this is our favorite website, the pizza that was left over was in blue, okay? That was the third of the pizza, and I want half of that, so I get the red part. Now, really, half of that one third really gives me that purple shaded part, which is one out of the six equal pieces. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Let me go back. If I have something like this, one-fifth times three-quarters, and again, I can think of, okay, I have three-quarters, and I'm splitting it into five, that three, each quarter into five pieces, and I get a one of those five. So let me go back to here, and I want three-quarters, so I'm going to start here put that into threes, and I'm taking three out of the four. But then I want one-fifth of that, so I'm going to up this. And if I take one-fifth out of that three-quarters, so the three-quarters was in red, I cut it into five pieces, each of the, the other way, and I'm taking one out of those. So if you look, what's in purple now is three out of, if we count all those up, 20. So what we see is three quarter or one fifth of three quarters is actually three twentieths. And you'll notice that the way that we can get that is we multiply the tops together and we multiply the bottoms together. Now that's not a very fancy way of saying that, but that's really what we do. Um, this would be three twentieths. So I said define the product of two fractions, multiply the tops together and the bottoms together. Now if you want it more sophisticated. We would say to find the product of two fractions, find the product of the numerators, the tops, and the product of the denominators, the bottoms. Right? So if we look at something like this, 
Okay, and this is a debate that I enter into with my students in grade nine all the time. They say, so I can just multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. And I say, yes, that's true, but you need to reduce things. So um, here's the way an approach that students often take. They say, okay, well, that's 10, and this is, oh, 5 times 16, and they may have to go off to the side and do that. 5 times 16, okay, 5 times 6 is 30, I'm carrying 3, 80. Okay, that's 80. But then we need to reduce that. You can never leave a fraction in an unreduced form. So now I need to reduce that. What goes into both of them? Well, in this case, it's relatively straightforward. It's 10. In other cases, it's not, right? So we can divide the top by 10 and the bottom by 10, that equality property, right? And we get 1 8th. Here's the approach I would rather you take. And the advantage of it is it'll mean that we don't have to deal with multiplying such big numbers. And if we do it right, we won't have to reduce in the end because our fraction will be reduced. If I look at the fraction or fractions originally and say, okay, what's common in the top? Is there a common factor in the top and bottom? And in this one, notice there's a 5 in the bottom and a 5 in the top. I can divide out that 5 right off the start. And both of those 5s become 1s. Now, if I look at 2 and 16, 2 also goes into 16. So I can divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2 and I get an 8 in the bottom. Now when we multiply, I get 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 8 is 8. I don't have to worry about uh, number 1, big, really big numbers, and number 2, reducing in the end. So, key idea, we must reduce before we multiply. Okay, if we do not do that, um, I will mark your answer wrong. And the reason for that is when we move into algebra, there's no way... To, uh, that we're going to want to be multiplying first and then factoring in the end. We don't want to do that. So if I take a question like this, right, instead of going 5 times 4 is 20, times 2 is 40, and then 5 times 15, which is a big number again, before I do that, I'm going to look and say, what can I divide out? And notice um, 5 and 15, 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 15 three times. If I move on to the 4, 4 and 8, okay, 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 8 twice. If I look there, there's a 2, there's also a 2 in the bottom, even though I remember it was part of the 8 originally, but I can still divide that out as long as one factor is in the top and one factor is in the bottom. Now if I look, there's all 1s in the top, so I'm basically done. The 3s that are in the bottom, since they're both in the bottom, we cannot divide those out. So... We multiply now. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, not 3. 1 times 3 times 3 is 9. And we get our answer. And notice it's reduced. And so that's what I want you doing here. All right, next idea. What happens when I get something like this? 3 times 1 and 1 half. And what students often do is they just multiply the whole numbers together. 3 times 1 is 3, and a half is 3 and a half. But let's go back to what this means. This really means three groups of one and one half. So here's my three groups of one and one half. Um, you notice that that's more than three and a half. If I rearrange things a little bit, that's actually four and a half. So I can't do it that way. So what we're going to have you do here is whenever we get an improper or a mixed number like that, we are going to rewrite it. Think of this as three over one times. And remember, one and one half is really three halves. Now, again, why is that? Well, let's go back to the picture. If I count them up, my three halves, I'm going to have to use red here so you can see it. Here's one half, two halves, three halves. So this is really times three halves. And now what we do is we do the same thing, multiply tops and bottoms. Notice there's threes, but both threes are in the top, so we cannot divide those out. So we get nine halves. Now, I will accept an answer like that. I know that often in elementary school they wouldn't, but I will. Um, but if you want to change it back, remember two goes into nine four times, and there's one left over, so I'd get four and one half. But I will accept the improper fraction. So, big idea. You have to change all mixed fractions into improper fractions before you multiply. Must, 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 must. Okay?
So if I take a, num a question like this, before I multiply, I need to rewrite these. So this first one, three times, um, I have three and one third, so the three holes, I was to take the three holes and each of those was split into three pieces. I'd have three times three is nine pieces plus the original one. I'd have ten thirds. Do the same thing with the two and two fifths. Each The two holes is split into five pieces. So two times five is ten plus two is twelve fifths. Now, I'm going to reduce before I multiply. And I look, five goes into ten twice. So I divide both those by 5, 3 goes into 12, 4 times. I'm going to end up with 8 over 1, and we wouldn't leave it like that normally. We never leave a division by 1. We think of this as 8 holes. Okay. All right, a couple of odds and ends here. What happens when you see something like this, 2 thirds to the third power? Well, go back to what exponents mean. Way back in the unit, um, unit 10, right? This really means 2 thirds times two-thirds times two-thirds, like this. Now if you look, there's nothing common, because if there was, we could have reduced the fraction to begin with. Two's on the top, three's on the bottom, so you just multiply them. Two times two times two is not six, eight. Three times three is nine, times three is 27. Okay? So, don't forget that one. Now, one other thing. Square root of 49, let's remember from way back in module 2, square root of 49 really means what multiplies by itself to give me 49. And that is 7, since 7 squared equals 49. In other words, 7 times 7 is equal to 49. Okay. So if I look at this, what multiplies by itself to give me 16 25ths, this is really saying you can think of it separately and say, okay, well, what multiplies by itself to give me 16? Well, and 16 is 4 times 4, so it would be 4. What multiplies by itself to give me 25? 5 does. That's 5 times 5. So that would be 4 fifths. And if you checked it, 4 fifths squared, well, that really means 4 fifths times 4 fifths. Let's try that again. Times 4 fifths. If I was to multiply that, 16 25ths. So yes, that's right. All right. One last one for us. So okay, we've been dealing with fractions. When might we use them? Here's a situation. So we have an electronics company. It's advertising they're going to take a third off the price of an iPod. If the iPod usually costs $180, at least the one I want, I want to know how much is the discount and what's the price of the iPod. So i got to find out how much are they taking off my price, right? So really what I want is I want a third of that $180. Now that word of really means we're going to be multiplying. So I really want to do this. A third times 180. So I'm going to think of this as over 1. Now can I reduce that? Well, think back to your divisibility rules. 1 plus 8 is 9. Yeah, 3 goes in there. So 3 goes in there how many times? And if you need to do that off to the side, do that. You'll get 60. So this is really 60 over 1, which is $60. Now, that's the discount. That is not what I pay. That is my discount. Oop. My O didn't show up. That's my discount. So how much do I actually pay? Well, I take my price, $180. I subtract my discount of $60. And I will get $120. So that's how much I will actually pay. That's the price of my iPod. So there's an example of where we might use fractions.